It's been about 20 years since welfare reform was signed into law by President Bill Clinton. Now, uh, what it did is that it turned the once generous program into a uh, program that was supposed to encourage work uh, and reduce poverty by basically limiting your benefits. Now, President Clinton said that he, look, man, my goal is to end welfare as we know it. Well, he's pretty much succeeded. Now, what are the results of that? I mean, what happened? Yes, he changed the rules of welfare. He said it's to encourage work. So what happened? Did it actually work? Did it, did it achieve the result that he said it would? Well, we've got uh, some of the results here. Now, some would argue, if you look at the raw numbers, that yes, this was a success. In fact, more than 13 million people received cash assistance from the government in 1995 before the law was passed. Nowadays, just 3 million people do. Well, that's a, that's a change of 10 million people. Big change, right? And you could look at that and go, success! Look at that! Great! Less people on welfare. Worked. Okay, well, if you look at those numbers, you could say that. Now, the problem is when you actually look at the data, when you actually look at things behind it, you see that that's actually kind of misleading. See, the main thing that makes welfare reform welfare reform is that Bill Clinton, in this bill, he made it he made it temporary. I mean, it's in the name, Temporary Assistance for Needy Families. Temporary. Okay. In fact, the law stipulated that people could receive no more than five years of government benefits in a lifetime. But it also allowed states to set their own limits. Some, like Oregon, have sent the maximum federal limit. States like Louisiana, however, according to NPR, have a much lower limit. In fact, Arizona is one of the lowest states. I believe it was third lowest state for the limit following uh, Mississippi. Uh, I think Minnesota actually might be might have the shortest limit. Anyway, Arizona has a one year limit for welfare. One year. That's it. You're, you're done for life if you go through that limit. If you don't find a job in a year and, you know, pull up yourself up by your bootstraps, you're fucked, buddy. There ain't nothing you can do. Now, Kathy Eden, poverty expert at John Hopkins University and co-author of Two Dollars a Day, living on almost nothing in America, said of this, it turned out that not everybody could get full-time, uh, full-year work. So basically, if you're one of those people who couldn't get back on their feet within that year in Arizona, well, that's a sad day for you, man. Not only that, but in places like Louisiana... Benefits are incredibly low. This is the story of one woman, a 31-year-old single mother named Natasha Williams. Now she says that even though she'd qualify, the benefits are so low that she doesn't even see the point. She says, quote, why look for a job if I already have a job? Why can't I get, just get a little help? It didn't really make sense to me. Now, looking at Louisiana's benefits, I understand why it doesn't make any sense now what natasha williams does she said she had a job right what she does is that she watches uh another person's child she does child care but in, instead of exchange for money she does it in exchange for food now if she wanted to be on welfare she would have to give up that job go through some job training and find another job for how much for an extra get this whopping $188 a month. Hmm. Now, it's not, exact, it's not as if she's living in the lap of luxury. She's doing child care for food. And look, I'll get to how much child care costs um, in, a, in, in a little bit here. Because it's insanity. But all that for $188. Doesn't seem like it's very worth it, does it? Daniel Millett, 22, who lives in a near who lives nearby in a shelter with her three children, ages four, three, and two, Millett does get welfare, and she says she appreciates the extra money. However, since it's so little, it barely covers school supplies like crayons, markers, and notebook paper that she's required to buy for her children. Yes, the schools in Louisiana and in many other places around the nation are so underfunded 
that parents are required to buy basic supplies, school supplies, like paper and pencils. Now, a lot of us will look at that and go, okay, what, a pack of paper is like two bucks. Who can afford that? Well, if you get $188 a month from welfare and you've got three kids, that doesn't go very far. That doesn't go very far at all. Not only that, but to qualify for the aid, Malette says that she has to pack up her children, get on a bus, and travel to two appointments a week to look for a job. Now, the state does give her money to cover some of the transportation and child care. However, it doesn't seem to be enough to cover her costs. And once again, some of those costs are child care, which are prohibitively expensive. Now, she says of this, it's too much. They're asking right now for too much. Now look, it seems pretty obvious that these people are stuck in some pretty impossible situations, right? Basically, not enough, not having enough money to pay for childcare means you're really not going to be able to find a job. You're you're not going to be able to leave the home. No, you, you can't watch your. You got to have someone to watch your kids. You can't stay home because you got to work. But if you can't afford childcare, you're pretty much stuck. And childcare is super expensive. So for single parents, it's incredibly hard to get out of that trap, especially for people who can't find enough, a good enough job to pay the bills and afford childcare at the same time. In fact, the average amount of welfare in Louisiana is around $200 a month. Now, the average cost of childcare in that state is $500 a month per child. Per child. That is considered a bargain. And of course, not all places are the same, Many states are different. It's uh, in Louisiana, it's about five thousand nine hundred dollars a year total for child care per child. However, in states like Michigan, for example, it's somewhere around eight to ten thousand dollars a year. It adds up fast. So, look, as far as welfare is concerned, it's really far from being super generous. Look, and I, I realize that's that that was that was the point, right? It was designed to get people back to work after all. And look, there was some success in that. In fact, there was an increase in families going back to work right after it passed. However, after this whole change, the poorest of the poor ended up being, of course, left behind. In fact, many of the most disadvantaged people have been unable to keep or get jobs. And many are worse off than they were before. For example, The Atlantic talked to a homeless woman who identified herself as Stacy. She wouldn't give her last name for anonymity reasons. Now, before, uh, now she's, as I said, she's homeless, right? So before she lived in the streets, she worked as a registered nurse for 20 years. She had a career as an RN. However, The Atlantic uh, notes that a series of events she declined to specify knocked her out of steady work and into homelessness. She can't get welfare, and now she's even running out of food stamps. That's right. Um, she is now out of food stamps. She lives in Arkansas, which is, they talk to a lot of people in Arkansas. Uh, Arkansas's governor, Republican Asa Hutchinson, basically ended uh, eligibility for food stamps for a lot of people in, back in April. So now she has nothing. She has no government assistance, can't get welfare, can't get food stamps. She's homeless, can't get a job. What is she supposed to do? She is stuck. She cannot get no, she can't get any help. Now, what's worse than the time limit is the fact that states are also allowed to spend TANF money in basically whatever they want, for whatever they want, in what's called a block grant program. This is what they want to do to Medicaid, by the way. This is what they want to do to food stamps. This is what the Republicans want to do to a lot of social programs. They want to block grant it to the state basically saying, here's state, here's some money, do whatever, have a party, I don't care. It's crazy. In fact, the Center of Budget uh, Policy and Priorities Analysis found that on average, states spend about half their TANF funds on benefits, job programs, and child care. Okay, it's not as if they're saying, okay, what we're going to do is we're going to cut our benefits, but don't worry, we're going to pour more of that money into job training and child care to help you get back to work. No, no, no. They spent about half of it on all of those three. And some states have used their TANF funds to also expand or fund other state programs or, of course, 
they'll do what most states do and just use it to plug holes in their budget. Oh, our tax cut for the rich left a giant hole in the budget. That's okay. We'll use this block grant from TANF and throw most of that into plugging that budget hole. Screw poor people. We got to give a rich, uh, the rich their tax cuts. Great. In fact, Ron Haskins, who helped write the welfare and reform bill as a GOP congressional aide, now thinks giving states so much flexibility was a huge mistake. He says, <clears throat> excuse me. He says those at the lower end of the economy are worse off than they were before. Often, they're single mothers who work part-time jobs and get little or no help from the fathers. They face multiple hurdles like unstable housing, poor education, and debt, none of which seems to have been helped by the program or by the government. So, in the, basically to answer the question, did welfare reform work? Not very well overall. In fact, in a recent report by the Center on Budget and Policy Priorities, researchers cite TANF's tough work requirements, time limits, and block grant infrastructure as other limiting factors that prevent the poorest of children from accessing funding. Additionally, the state's discretion to spend its TANF block grant funding on its own priorities, rather than cash assistance directly for families, has severely hampered the effectiveness of the program. So what can we do? What can they do? Like, to make welfare better. Well, Oregon actually seems to have a program that shows some promise. And it's not actually handing out free money. It's actually using it smartly. According to NPR, Oregon has an innovative job training program called Jobs Plus. It's helping welfare recipients find permanent employment. Participants in Jobs Plus get a paycheck for working for up to six months in a job they're placed in. They don't get government assistance while they're working. They're paid by their employers, who are then reimbursed by this program. And last year, it was so effective that last year, the Oregon legislature used savings from the drop in welfare caseloads following the recession to raise income thresholds and allow more people to stay on TANF longer to be able to find jobs. Now, that's one idea. That's one solution that might help. Now, it won't solve the problem. But it is just better than taking everything away, if you're lucky enough to have a good paying job by the time it runs out. So look, no, it's looking at this data, we can see that welfare reform in most respects has failed. It's only succeeded in lowering the rate of people on welfare, mostly because people have ended up running out of welfare or running out of time. Yes, some have made the successful transition from welfare to work, and that's actually what we want. We want more of that. We don't want people to stay on welfare forever. The people on welfare don't want to stay on welfare forever. Most of them. What we want to do is we want to have this program that is there to help out the most vulnerable and to help them give and, and to give them a hand up. And in 20 years since welfare reform has passed, it hasn't had that effect. So I think maybe it's time to reform it again. Maybe this time we'll get it right. Hey everybody, if you like this video, then please like this video and share. And if you want to see more like this, then please hit that subscribe button below.